I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. One for each of your victims. So be it. The Shawshank Redemption is a period prison drama about hope, emotion and friendship. It didn't have massive explosions or visual effects. Well, actually, it did have some VFX, but I'll get to that in a bit. And it didn't have big Hollywood names or a massive marketing budget. So it was a pretty hard sell from the box office to start out with. And considering it was also released the same year as The Lion King, Forrest Gump, The Mask, The Crow, Interview with a Vampire, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Pulp Fiction and Speed, it never really stood a chance and it wasn't until it was released on VHS and later became a staple of TNT's programming schedule that it began to receive the appreciation it truly deserved. But perhaps something that still doesn't get much appreciation is how the whole thing was actually made in the first place. So in this video we're going to explain just how they made some of those iconic shots that you probably watched without actually realising what was really going on. If I had a gun one thing right at the beginning of this movie that most people have no idea of is that these hands are actually director Frank Darabont's hands. The reason for this is simple. Rather than having to direct someone to do something that he can do himself, Darabont finds it easier just to do inserts like this himself. Another shot where you get to see Darabont's hands again is when Andy, or should I say Darabont, scrapes the wall with the rock pick. Something you also might not have noticed at the beginning of this movie is this grass. If you look closely, you'll notice there's a wind blowing. This is from the helicopter they used to film this shot of the prison. Minor pet peeve, this flag is way too loud. When Andy and his fellow inmates arrive at the prison and get off the bus, they are greeted by a crowd of very friendly looking faces. Now, if you, like me, found this guy in particular to be quite familiar, then let me just point out that it could be because you've already seen him before, just a minute ago. Yep, he's the guy in this mugshot, who is also Morgan Freeman's very own son, Alfonso Freeman. The duration of Andy's time at Shawshank is just shy of 20 years, so in order to show the time progressing, they added a winter shot with snow. This was actually done with fans blowing potato flakes across the shot. Now, this technique isn't actually anything new, and we've even covered it before in our Home Alone effects breakdown, which I'll leave a link in the video description if you haven't already seen it yet. I fully recommend it. Nowadays, they would just use VFX for something like this, but back then, CGI wasn't so readily used on things they could already achieve in other ways. Now, in this scene, however, they did actually have to use VFX. This is because in order for them to be able to get close to the edge of this building and still be safe, Clancy Brown and Tim Robbins had to wear safety wires, so these needed to be painted out digitally in post-production. Wait, can you still see the wires, or is that just bad video compression? Anyway, they also used VFX at the end of the movie in the last shot of The Warden. However, if you're watching a copy of this movie before 2004, you won't see it. Let me explain. In the original movie, the gunshot wound here doesn't align with where he put the gun here. So in the 2004 DVD and the 2010 Blu-ray edition, they used VFX to move the wound to where the warden originally positioned the gun. Now, aside from it being a continuity mistake that drove the director crazy for 10 years, this may not seem like something important enough to spend the money changing it, but it's examples like this attention to detail that made Shawshank the masterpiece it is today. Another good example of attention to detail is the Bible that Andy hides the rock hammer in. The hollow made for the hammer could have started on any page of the Bible, but the prop builder thought that Exodus would be most appropriate to the story. You see, the word Exodus originates from the Greek word exodus, which pretty much means the road out. Something else you may not have noticed while Andy was on his road out, trekking through 400 metres of sewage, was that the actual pipe wasn't actually 400 metres long, but instead only about six. The illusion of its additional length was created by cinematographer Roger Deakins, who got an artist to draw concentric circles on a piece of card that was then stuck onto the end of the pipe. Roger Deakins had used this trick previously in the Down the Plug Hole shot in Barton Fink. 
the sewage that burst out of the pipe here, which wouldn't have actually happened, but let's not get into that, and the stuff that Andy crawls through here is, thankfully, just a mixture of water, fuller's earth and sawdust. However, unfortunately, the water in the creek at the end of the pipe wasn't as clean and was actually a real creek full of agricultural runoff. The art department had to dam it up to make it deeper and add chlorine to kill any of the bacteria that could harm Tim Robbins. Even so, the water was still full of toxins, so it's a good job that he could take a shower after. 